Good evening class. Uh, we shall continue with Title 15 of the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines, our topic, Foreign Corporations. So once again, our source materials are Partnerships and Private Corporations by De Leon and De Leon Jr. and also Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines, a short introduction by Aquino and Aquino. So let's begin uh, with the nationality of corporations. So how to determine the nationality of a corporation. So there are two tests actually, the incorporation test and also the control test. So the incorporation test uh, provides that if it is organized or incorporated under the law of the Philippines, it is domestic corporation. Now, if it is incorporated uh, under the laws of a foreign country, it is a foreign corporation. Now, if uh, a foreign corporation uh, is organized under the laws of another country, with respect to that country, remember, yung corporation na to is a domestic corporation. Uh, any corporation which is incorporated uh, in a place other than doon sa foreign country na yon, the foreign country will consider as a foreign corporation. So yun ang tandaan natin sa incorporation test. It depends on where it was incorporated. So if it is incorporated in the Philippines, it is a domestic corporation incorporated elsewhere other than in the Philippines, foreign corporation. Now, control test is um, uh, employed during war times for reason of reasons of national security. So uh, domestic corporation controlled by enemy aliens shall be deemed a foreign corporation. Uh, depende sa controlling stockholders to. So if the controlling stockholders are uh, enemy aliens, it is considered as a foreign corporation. So employed again during times of war for reasons of national security. Uh, please take note also of the grandfather rule. They always ask this in uh, the board exam. So the grandfather rule is a method. Uh, of determining whether uh, determining the nationality of a corporation uh, which is owned in part by another corporation uh, by breaking down the equity structure of the shareholder corporation so this talks about uh, two corporations so um, there is partial ownership by another corporation so isang corporation ang kanyang stockholder ay isa na namang corporation so um, bago malaman ang kanyang nationality uh, bago malaman yung nationality ng uh, main corporation, yung shareholder corporation, i-break down yung kanyang equity structure to determine yung nationality. So anyway, uh, just take note of that. They always ask that in the uh, board exam. So anyway, foreign corporations formed, organized, existing under any laws other than those of the Philippines. And ito yung, ba, yung, ito yung addition sa corporation code na, again, uh, sinama nila sa revised corporation code uh, and whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in its own country or state. So remember, ang foreign corporation na nire-recognize natin is uh, one incorporated elsewhere other than in the Philippines and um, yung mga uh, countries na ito kung saan na-incorporate yung foreign corporation also allows Filipino citizens and corporation corporations to do business in the foreign country or uh, state. So the, uh, please remember class that uh, when it comes to a foreign, when it comes to a corporation class, ang kanyang, um, uh, kanyang existence is only confined to the state wherein it is incorporated. So kung ang uh, domestic corporation, uh, Philippine corporation, ang kanyang uh, existence is confined only in the Philippines. But obviously, class, um, pwede rin namang uh, mag-business sa ibang state ang isang uh, Philippine corporation, uh, pero with the consent of the foreign state. The same is true with a foreign corporation. Ang uh, existence ng isang foreign corporation is limited only dun sa foreign country where it is incorporated. But again, it can do business in the Philippines. Hindi naman uh, malilimit yon. So, pwede siyang mag-business uh, mag, uh, dito sa Philippines provided that there is consent from our uh, state. So, uh, paano makukuha yung uh, authorization from our state? By obtaining, remember, a license. So, yan. So, 
it will impose conditions para makakuha ng license. Conditions must be, remember, reasonable conditions. So anyway, the purpose of regulation of foreign corporations, ito ang dahilan why we regulate foreign corporations or we require them to get licenses in the Philippines is number one, to place them on an equality uh, with domestic corporations. What else? To subject them to inspection so that the condition may be known to protect the residents of the state doing business with them by subjecting them subjecting subjecting them to the courts of the state and uh, incidentally to require payment of fees and taxes so that we can raise revenues so yun ang purposes kung bakit tayo ay nagre-regulate ng foreign corporation so anyway uh, license obviously is uh, and certificate of authority will be required from foreign corporations as a general rule class um, as a rule corporations foreign corporations will not be allowed to transact business in the Philippines unless they have uh, secured a license uh, or a certificate of authority from an or from the appropriate government agency so uh, remember section 141 um, Pagka yung foreign corporation authorized to transact uh, business in the Philippines, um, yung license niya is issued pursuant to, the, pursuant to the revised corporation code. Obviously, it will be bound by the terms of the uh, revised code. Now, if the license was issued before the RCCP, uh, continues pa rin yung authority niya under the license na nakuha niya noon prior to the revised uh, code. But obviously subject to the provisions of the uh, revised code and other special laws. So, hindi kailangan kumuha ng bagong license kasi continuous pa rin yung authority niya. But subject to the uh, provisions ng revised code and um, other special laws. Uh, what else? The procedure for uh, application for a license. So, number one, submit to the SEC an application. Tapos, uh, it will set forth the matters under Section 142. So, um, remember, yung matters uh, enumerated by law, hindi na kailangang ilagay sa application kung nakalagay na sa Articles of Incorporation. So, uh, kung sa 142 nire-require ito, pero nakalagay na rin sa Articles of Incorporation, hindi na kailangang ulitin pa sa application. Now, the contents of the application, date and term of incorporation. So, kung nakalagay na sa articles yan, huwag nang ilagay sa application. Uh, what else? Address including the street number of the principal office of the corporation in the country or state of incorporation. Uh, ano yan? A foreign corporation uh, incorporated in Germany. Lagay natin ang address ng uh, foreign corporation na yan sa state of incorporation niya, which is uh, Germany. So, include mo para yung street number, etc. A name and address of its resident agent authorized to accept summons and process in all legal proceedings and all legal notices affecting the cor corporation pending the establishment of a local office. Siyempre, nag-apply ka pa lang for license. Hindi naman alam ng foreign corporation kung mag-grant yan or hindi. So, probably, it will not yet establish a local office. Now, in the meantime, paano makikipag-communicate ang SEC dito sa foreign corporation na ito na nag apply ng license? Uh, remember, through a resident agent. The resident agent will be authorized to accept summons and other legal processes. Mga sulat galing sa SEC. Yun ang tatanggapin ng resident uh, agent which uh, we will discuss more about uh, them later on. Uh, so, what else? Uh, also, uh, number four, the place in the Philippines where the corporation intends to uh, operate. Uh, kung saan nila gusto establish yung kanilang office, tsaka yung kanilang uh, business establishment. What else? Specific purpose or purposes which the corporation intends to pursue in the transaction of its business in the Philippines. So, uh, the purposes are those specifically stated in the Certificate of Authority issued by the appropriate government agency. So, kung ano ang gusto nilang uh, i-business dito sa corporation, ano ang purpose nila. So, yun ang kanilang kailangan i-indicate sa kanilang application. 
what else uh, names addresses of the present directors and officers of the corporation a statement of the authorized capital stock in case of uh, par value shares a statement of the capital stock in case of no par value shares kung ilan ang number of shares na i-issue ng uh, corporation are itemized by class par value or if shares uh, are without par value and series if any so ilalagay yung mga classification uh, what else number uh, eight statement of the outstanding capital stock the aggregate number of uh, shares um, which the corporation has issued itemized by class par value shares without par value and series if any so ilagay nyo kung ano yung mga stocks na nasa kamay ng uh, ibang tao other than the corporation such as your stockholders etc etc so yun ang outstanding capital stock statement of paid in capital what else uh, number 10 such additional very important such additional information as may be necessary to determine uh, for the sec to determine whether or not the corporation is entitled to be issued a license and also to determine and assess the fees payable by the corporation after that uh, the uh, the west foreign corporation must submit to the sec the application with the uh, accompanying documents so ano ba yung mga kasamang documents under 142 copy of articles and bylaws kung nasa foreign language with uh, official translation uh yun na nga if necessary uh what else uh, number two yung uh, oath of reciprocity so if the oath of reciprocity is in a foreign language of course official translation uh, under oath so remember the oath of reciprocity is a certificate under oath uh, issued by an authorized uh, official or officials of uh, the, uh, the jurisdiction of its incorporation attesting to the fact that the laws of the country or state of the applicant allow Filipino citizens and corporation to do business therein and the applicant is an existing corporation in good standing so ang nakalagay lang sa oath of incorporation na yan ay oy dito sa foreign country pwedeng mag-incorporate ang mga ay pwedeng kumuha ng license ang Filipino corporations and yung mga Filipino citizens pwede ring uh, mag-business dito it is allowed here in this foreign country so oath of reciprocity nga kasi reciprocal we allow these foreign countries to transact business in the philippines they also allow a uh, foreign um they also allow filipino uh, corporations and citizens to do business in their for in their country so dun sa foreign country na yan kanya nga reciprocity reciprocal uh, rights or privileges are granted uh, what else number three statement uh under oath of the president or any other person authorized by the corporation that the applicant is solvent and in sound financial standing so kailangan ilagay yung assets and liabilities as of date not exceeding one year prior to the filing of the application so may pera kami yun lang sasabihin ng foreign corporation ito yung assets namin ito yung liabilities namin what else um the member class uh, no application for license to transact business will be accepted by the sec without previous authority from the appropriate government agency if it is whenever it is required by uh, law also number five uh yung written power of attorney which designated a resident agent and um also there must be an agreement that the sec is designated as receiver of summons and all legal processes in case the foreign corporation shall cease to transact business or be without a resident agent in the philippines anyway nakalagay dun sa mismong uh, provision 145 kung papano a uh, state dyan uh, in 145 uh, uh, nakalagay dyan the name uh, the foreign corporation hereby stipulates and agrees in consideration for of being granted a license to transact business in the philippines that if the corporation shall cease to transact business in the philippines or shall be without a resident agent in the philippines on whom any summons or other legal processes may be served then service of any summons or other legal process may be made upon the commission or the sec 
in any action or proceeding arising out of any business or transaction which occurred in the Philippines and yung service thou shall have the same force and effect as if made on the duly authorized officers of the corporation at the home office. So yun ang pagkakasabi sa section 145. So also please take note of the definition of a resident agent. Uh, actually, it is defined by its function. So resident agent will receive summons and other legal processes in all actions uh, or legal proceedings involving the corporation. So again, kung wala na silang uh, resident agent or there is, uh, if the corporation cease to transact business, um, it, the service may be made to the SEC. Now, anyway, remember class that service to the resident agent is the same as service to the duly authorized officers of the foreign corporation at the uh, at the home office so parang pagka binigay mo sa resident agent parang binigay mo mismo sa uh, authorized officers sa foreign corporation uh, what else um, in case of change of address ng resident agent the resident agent must duly must uh, immediately notify the SEC in writing of uh, yung kanyang bagong address so Appointment of a resident agent revocable at any time by the corporation. So, sino ang maging, pwedeng maging resident agent? Pwedeng individual, basta good moral character, sound financial standing, pwede rin namang corporation. As long as the corporation is registered with the SEC, it is lawfully transacting business in the Philippines, sound financial standing, and must show proof of good, finan uh, good standing as certified by the SEC. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. Now, um, compliance uh, with uh, special laws. Please, uh, uh, remember also before before we uh, move on with this, if a uh, service is made upon the SEC, kasi nga wala na silang resident agent or the foreign corporation ceases to ceases in transacting business in the Philippines. So, if the service is made upon the SEC, it must, uh, SEC must within 10 days transmit by mail a copy of the summons or other legal process to the foreign corporation at the home or principal office address. So, magpapadala agad ng sulat ang SEC. So, yung, pag, yung agad na yun is within 10 days from a uh, receipt ng kanyang, ng sulat from the courts or etc. Now, um, all expenses incurred uh, by the SEC shall be paid in advance by the party who wants to, uh, who in whose uh, instance the service is made. So, yung party na gustong magpa-serve sa foreign corporation, kailangan siya ang magbayad noong agastos for uh, mailing. So, anyway, compliance with special laws, foreign banking, financial insurance corporation shall comply with uh, provisions of existing laws which are applicable to them. Now, lastly, uh, SEC is satisfied that all the requirements, uh, yung applicant uh, has complied with all the requirements, it will issue a license to transact business in the Philippines for the purposes specified in the license. So, kung ano yung pinag-applyan niyang purpose, ilalagay sa license yan, yun lang ang pwede niyang uh, gawin na uh, business. So, tuloy-tuloy um, yung uh, authority to act, uh, to comment, uh, to transact business in the Philippines as long as nandun yung kanyang uh, license. So, mawawala lang yung kanyang uh, license, yung kanyang authority to act if yung corporation na yan, foreign corporation, is uh, yung kanyang art certificate of incorporation is revoked in the foreign country or uh, yung license niya dito sa Philippines is also uh, surrendered, revoked, or suspended, or annulled in accordance with our uh, laws. So, what else? Um, conditions after the issuance of license. So, after issuance ng license ng SEC, ito yung mga additional uh, rules. So, foreign corporation shall transact business only for the purposes which is which it is authorized under the license. So, whatever is uh, written in the license, yun lang pwede niyang uh, gawin. What else? Uh, 
60 days after the license is issued uh, this applies except to a foreign or banking foreign banking or insurance corporation as uh, yung uh, licensee or yung foreign corporation shall deposit with the SEC uh, yung uh, securities satisfactory to the SEC nga pwedeng bonds other financial instruments uh, determined suitable by the SEC actual market value must be 500,000 or such other amount as may be set by the SEC so the deposit now may consist of uh, shares of stock in domestic corporations uh, listed in the stock market uh, shares of stock in domestic insurance companies and banks or any financial uh, instrument uh, deemed suitable by the SEC or a combination thereof so in short magpa-file sila ng uh, security um, in the amount of 500,000 uh, pesos actual market value at least so pwede pang tumaas tataas talaga uh, after uh, each fiscal year of the license so every time na mag anniversary yung license each fiscal year of uh, a fiscal year of the license remember uh, SEC will require you on um, uh, foreign corporation to deposit additional securities but yung additional securities will be um, will be deposited only um, uh, if the gross income of the licensee exceeds uh, for each fiscal year exceeds at uh, 10 million pesos so uh, 2% yan ng uh, market value noong uh, excess sa uh, 10 million so kung 10 million ang uh, ang kanyang uh, gross income hindi na kailangan mag-file ng additional uh, securities or financial instruments now um if the income is gross is 12 million remember kailangan siya mag-file ng additional securities um 2% noong uh, excess which is uh, 2 million so dun magbe-base yung um uh, additional 2% additional uh, securities so also yung deposited na additional securities ay uh, yung deposited na securities pwede pang increase ng SEC yan pagka nawalan siya ng nag-depreciate ang kanyang uh, value so if there is depreciation of 10% of their actual market value pwedeng padagdagan ng SEC yung mga securities na ibinigay ng uh, foreign corporation but obviously if uh, nagkaroon ng uh, parang hindi naman nagkaroon ng profit pero uh, yung gross income uh, nag decrease so SEC can also release yung mga uh, addition, uh, yung mga securities so imbis na maghingi siya ng additional i-release niya yung mga securities already deposited uh, kung nagkaroon ng decrease or if the actual market value of the total securities on deposit has increased so there is an appreciation noong uh, market value ng mga securities uh, pwedeng i-release yung portion corresponding to the uh, increase in the market value or yung uh, decrease dun sa gross income so obviously licensee may be allowed to substitute securities and also entitled to collect interest per dividends to securities uh, deposited uh, what else number uh, five comply with the provisions of existing uh, laws reg rules and regulations uh, otherwise sec may common sense to revoke its license what else if um, the licensee or foreign corporation uh, stops doing business in the philippines ibabalik yung mga securities niya pero kailangan pang i-apply yan and kailangan patunayan na walang existing liabilities ang foreign corporation na ito. So remember class that the purpose of licenses is to uh, subject the foreign corporation doing business to the jurisdiction of uh, the court. So ang purpose ng license is... Uh, para yung mga foreign corporation na doing business in the Philippines ma parang magkaroon ng jurisdiction ang 
court natin sa kanya. So, pwede naman kasing mag-perform ng single transaction sa Pilipinas without doing uh, without uh, obtaining a license. Tapos pwede ring magdemanda uh, kung nagkaroon ng uh, breach of uh, yung contract na ito. So, ito yung tinatawag nating isolated business transaction rule which we will discuss uh, later on. So, ang ano na to, ang ayaw lang talaga ng um, ng law natin is continuous business tapos wala kang license. So, hindi ka maipasok sa jurisdiction ng Philippine uh, courts. So, kaya nagre-require ang SEC at ang law na kumuha ng license. So, anyway, please take note of the definition of doing, engaging, or transacting business. Walang fixed rule. No hard and fast rule uh, to define what uh, constitutes doing business. And it depends on the circumstances. So, but necessary, ito kailangan talaga. The business must be continuous and not of a temporary character. Also, it should be profit making. Yan. So, def wala, walang rules talaga, walang fixed rules. Pero, kailangan continuous business and profit making business. Para consider siya as an act doing, engaging, or transacting business. Now, um, the rules regarding doing, engaging, or transacting in business, the acts included dito sa doing, engaging, or transacting business, uh, number one, soliciting orders, purchases, service contracts, so naghahanap ka ng orders, customers, etc. Number two, you open offices in the Philippines. Number three, you appoint representative or distributors who are based in the Philippines or uh, any person who in any calendar year stays in the Philippines for a period or periods totaling 180 days or more. So, yung mga distributor mo rito or representative mo sa Pilipinas, uh, it's either dito sila nakatira or lagi sila dito. Periods totaling 180 days or more. What else? You participate in the management, supervision, or control of a domestic corporation or business ikaw ay doing business in the Philippines what else any other acts implying continuity continuity sabi ko sa inyo eh, of commercial dealings or arrangement and contemplate commercial gain so continuity of business contemplate profit or commercial gain so what else acts which are not included in the term doing business number 1 investment lang. Investment in a domestic corporation. Bili ka ng shares of stock. Hindi ka naman nakikialam sa management. Not doing business daw. What else? Number two. Um, exercise of rights as such investor. Investor ka lang naman. Hindi ka naman nakikialam sa management. You exercise only your rights as an investor. This is not doing business. Uh, what else? Having a nominee or director or officer to represent is its interest in such corporation. So, if you will appoint a director or officer or nominee to vote for you in um, or to represent you in the corporation, ikaw na foreign corporation, hindi ka pa rin considered as doing business in the Philippines. Investor ka pa rin eh. Uh, what else? Appointing a representative or distributor domicile in the Philippines, but this distributor or representative will transact business in its own name and for its own account. So, meron kang representative distributor, pero uh, pagka nag-transact ng business, ang gamit niya is yung pangalan niya. It does not use the name of the foreign corporation. This is considered not doing business in the Philippines. So, anyway, applicable laws uh, under 146. Uh, Philippine laws are applicable to uh, licensed foreign corporation, obviously. Uh, yung kanilang laws of state of creation will apply also. Yung kanilang uh, laws ng foreign corporation, wherein they were incorporated, will uh, govern in cases of uh, matters uh, relative to creation, formation, organization, or dissolution of corporations and relations, re liabilities, responsibilities, or duties of members, stockholders, officers, 
to each other or to the corporation. So, yan ang tandaan natin. In short, class, in case of organizational or internal affairs, they are the foreign corporation is governed by the foreign uh, country wherein it incorp wherein it incorporated. What else? Um, foreign laws must be proven in our courts. So, uh, if they are not proven as a fact in our court, they will be presumed to be the same as the Philippines. So, kailangan mo ng proof. Ito yung law sa bansa namin eh. So, ganun ang uh, style niyan. Uh, what else? Amendment of the articles uh, of incorporation and also the bylaws. So, um, amendments will be effective. This is based on the law of the foreign country. Remember, pagka nag-amend ng articles of incorporation at saka bylaws ang foreign corporation, depende sa law nila. Kung ano ang law nila tungkol sa amendment, kung ano ang law nila tungkol sa amendment ng articles, amendment ng incorporation, yun ang masusunod yung law nila. Kasi foreign corporation dito, ito, di ba? Internal ito. Organizational. So, the laws of the foreign country will uh, uh, govern. So, anyway, um, uh, so, yung mga amendments may become effective even before they are filed with the SEC. Obvious to eh. Kasi in-amend mo dun. So, yung effectivity niya depende sa rules dun. So, even before uh, you file with the SEC yung amended articles mo, pwedeng effective na. So, anyway, um, pagka nagkaroon ng amendment sa articles or bylaws sa foreign corporation, yung foreign corporation na yon within 60 days after the amendment becomes effective, syempre mauna na naman talaga na maging effective yan sa ibang bansa eh. Tapos, kailangan nating mag-file ng copy sa SEC or uh, with the appropriate government agency within, remember, 60 days. So, a duly authenticated copy of the articles or the bylaws and also there must be an indication in capital letters or underscoring of the change or changes made duly certified by the authorized official or officials of the country of the state of incorporation. Please take note also of the instances when an amended license is required under section 148. So the first one is when a foreign corporation changes its corporate name. So remember, a foreign corporation will amend its articles of incorporation in its home country to change the to change its corporate name. So also remember that the um, license uh, issued in the Philippines has been issued uh, in the original name of the said corporation. Now, doon sa license, ang authorized to do business is yung... Uh, corporation under its original name hindi naman dun sa kanyang bagong pangalan which necessitates uh, an amendment of the license issued to such foreign corporation what else foreign corporation deserves to do business per, uh, pursue in the philippines other or additional purposes so remember ang uh, pwede lang na purpose na i-pursue ng isang foreign corporation are yung purposes na nakalagay doon sa kanya License. Now, it, if wants to pursue additional or other purposes, kailangan siyang mag-amend noong license niya or else hindi pwede kasi that is uh, uh, outside of the coverage of the issued uh, license. Uh, what else? Merger or consolidation. So here, the foreign corporation will merge with another corporation. So uh, the merger may, merger or consolidation may be between a foreign uh, corporation and a domestic corporation or it may be between two foreign corporations. So now remember in 149, uh, ang rules with respect to merger or consolidation with a domestic corporation, uh, this is allowed actually as long as ang sabi ng law, there is a concurrent legislation in each state of the constituent foreign and domestic corporation authorizing the merger or consolidation. Uh, kung sa Philippines, mayroong law authorizing merger or consolidation, and dun sa home country ng foreign corporation, meron din silang law authorizing merger or consolidation, pwede sila, pwedeng mag-merge yung dalawang corporations na yon. Uh, provided, class, that um, 
the requirements on merger or consolidation as provided for in Title IX of the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines are followed. Basta kailangan reciprocal. Pwede meron lo doon na sa home country ng foreign corporation na pwede tayong pwedeng makipag pwede sila makipag-merge or consolidate. Meron din tayong lo dito sa Pilipinas na pwedeng makipag-merge or consolidate yung ating mga uh, domestic corporation. So obviously here in the Philippines, we are already aware that there is such a law under Title 9 of the Revised Corporation uh, Code. Now also take note that merger or consolidation with a foreign corporation obviously um, this will be uh, covered uh, or this will be in accordance with the uh, uh, laws of the home country or state of the foreign corporation. Wala na tayong, labas na tayo dito kasi bahala na sila doon kung paano sila mag-merge, paano sila mag-consolidate. It is in accordance with their rules. Now, what will happen here? Because um, obviously, yung uh, foreign corporation na to is licensed to transact business in the Philippines. May license siya dito, di ba? Um, yung isa sa mga foreign corporation na yan, at the least. Um, within 60 days after such mer merger or consolidation becomes effective, yung uh, foreign corporation licensed to do business in the Philippines must file um, a copy of their articles of merger or consolidation duly authenticated by the proper official or officials of the country or state under the laws of which the merger or consolidation was effected. So, kailangan lang ng mga foreign corporation na nakipag-merge sa ibang foreign corp nakipag-merge or nakipag-consolidate sa ibang foreign corporation na merong license dito sa Pilipinas na mag-submit ng copy ng kanilang articles of incorporation ay articles of merger or articles of consolidation sa SEC and in proper cases appropriate government agency now also please take note that if the uh, foreign corporation license to do business in the Philippines is the absorbed corporation remember sa merger yung absorbed corporation nawawalan ng legal personality yan na absorb nga eh so obviously dahil mawawala na siya the absorbed corporation must file a petition for withdrawal of license in accordance with 153 of the revised corporation code also please take note of um, the effects of doing business without a license under 150 so um remember class yung mga foreign corporations now without a license they are not ipso facto incapacitated from bringing an action in philippine courts yung license talaga is kailangan lang if uh, the corporation intends to do business in the Philippines. So, hindi naman porke wala kang license, foreign corporation ka dito sa Pilipinas, hindi ka na pwede ka agad mag uh, demanda rito sa Philippine courts. Pwede naman. Pero kung ikaw ay isang foreign corporation and you are here doing business and you do not have a license, hindi pwede yan. So, yun ang kailangan yung tandaan. So, uh, please take note of a uh, suit by a foreign corporation, meaning ang foreign corporation ang magfa-file. The general rule is that if the foreign corporation is transacting business without a license, wala siyang lisensya, pero nagtatransact siya ng business, they will, they will not be permitted, they shall not, shall pa nga eh, not be permitted to maintain or intervene in any action, suit or proceeding in any court or administrative agency of the Philippines. In short, they have no right to sue. So, not licensed but doing business, abusado kayo. Wala kayong right na mag-sue sa Philippine courts kung kayo ang foreign corporation na ito. But there is an exception in case of estopel. So, unlicensed foreign corporation doing business in the Philippines, um, pwede siyang magdemanda against a Philippine citizen or entity na nag, nakipag-contract sa kanila and nag-benefit from the unlicensed foreign corporation. Siyempre, ikaw na Filipino citizen or Filipino corporation na kinabang ka dun sa unlicensed uh, foreign uh, corporation, nakipag-transact ka sa kanila, nakipag-benefit ka sa kanila, 
Tapos later on, i-deny mo yung kanilang personality. Hindi pwede yun. E eh, nakipag-transact ka nga eh. So there is um, an acknowledgement of their uh, personality. Kaya um, hindi ka na pwedeng magsabi, you are already stopped from denying yung existence ng for unlicensed foreign corporation na ito. So, yun ang exception in cases of estopel uh, only. But, uh, in cases of estopel, hindi naman only yan, marami pang uh, iba na cases when a foreign corporation is allowed to file action even if it is unlicensed. Number two, suit against a foreign corporation. Pwede mo ba silang idemanda kung sila ay walang lisensya? Obviously, pwede. So, on any valid cause of action recognized under Philippine laws. And it shall not be permitted to continue business unless it obtains a license. So, so the rules are very simple. If you are a licensed foreign corporation in the Philippines, meron kang right to sue. Meron ka ring, uh, meron ding, pwede ka ring idemanda. You, you can be sued, you can sue. Yan. Now, if you are an unlicensed foreign corporation doing business in the Philippines, remember class na you can be sued. Pwede kang idemanda, but as a general rule, you cannot sue. So, yun ang tandaan nyo. Hindi ka pwedeng magdemanda as a general rule. So, kung may license ka, you are doing business in the Philippines, magdemanda ka. Siyempre, pwede ka rin idemanda. Now, kung ikaw ay unlicensed foreign corporation and again doing business in the Philippines pwede kang idemanda pero ikaw wala kang karapatang magdemanda subject to uh, exceptions uh, please take note also of uh, suits by or against a foreign corporation not doing business in the Philippines ito yung mga suits that are allowed but here class tandaan nyo yung pinagkaiba kanina Yung mga diniscuss ko earlier, ito, ito, babalik ko dito. Ayan, remember here class that the corporation, unlicensed corporation is doing business without a license. Yan, nakikita nyo naman dito sa taas noong uh, uh, slide. Effects of doing business without a license. So here, the foreign corporation is doing business but without a license. Now, um, here, suits by or against a foreign corporation the foreign corporation is not doing business in the Philippines. So, remember, dahil nga naman hindi sila nagninegosyo dito sa Pilipinas, hindi sila abusado. So, yung mga courts natin, they are open to these kinds of foreign corporations. So, anyway, in case of the isolated business transaction rule, anong ibig sabihin yan? Paminsan-minsan lang. Uh, one transaction lang. So, Kung nagkaroon ng uh, violation ng contract, nagkaroon ng damages uh, um, yung foreign corporation na to, dahil nga naman hindi naman siya continuous business. Nagkataon lang na may isa siyang transaction, tapos nagkataon pa na naloko siya, nagkataon pa na hindi siya makasingil, nagkataon na kailangan siya magdemanda. Um, the courts will allow them to file action. Kasi nga, this is an isolated transaction. Isa lang, nagkataon lang. So, the foreign corporation here is not excluded from receiving a uh, redress in Philippine courts. Tutulungan siya ng Philippine uh, courts. What else? Number two, if the action is for the protection of trade name or trademark. So, ang trade name or trademark is um, right in rem. Kasi ito ay kasama dun sa right to use a corporate name. So, remember, a right in rem is enforceable against the entire world and it it is a right that can be protected in any courts in the world even in countries where this foreign corporation does not transact business so yung protection of trade name or trademark is for uh, protecting the reputation corporate name and goodwill acquired by the corporation so halimbawa ito ang corporation mo foreign corporation yan um uh, let us say, uh, guest corporation. Tapos marami kang nakikita sa Pilipinas na guest na products. Tapos hindi naman talaga sila galing sa uh, guest na US. So, may mga fake. Tapos madali pang masira. So, ikaw naman na guest talaga sa 
na original na corporation, nasisira yung pangalan mo kasi ang daming lumalabas na mga fake. Akala nila original. Tapos, akala nila hindi matiba yung product mo. So, to protect your reputation, corporate name, and goodwill acquired by this uh, foreign corporation, they can file an action in the Philippines only to protect their corporate name, trade name, trademark, etc. Non-business transaction in the Philippines also allowed to sue. Um, here, the business transaction did not arise out of uh, the Philippines, except there is a cause of action na nangyari sa Pilipinas. So, let us say, uh, Singaporean Corporation deals with uh, Hong Kong, China, uh, Corporation in China. So, uh, so itong, foreign, itong Singaporean Corporation na to, let us say, will deliver goods by uh, sea. So, meron siyang cargo na pinadala. Nakakatawa yun, ano? Pagka uh, papadala mo sa land, ang tawag sa kanya ay shipment. Ship. S-H-I-P. Shipment. Pero pagka papadala mo sa dagat, ang tawag sa kanya ay cargo. C-A-R-G-O. ba Parang yung isa sa mo sa ship, pero pang land. Yung nasa car, pang uh, dagat. So, anyway, meron kang isa sa na cargo sa isang uh, ship. <laughs> Ganun nga talaga. Tapos, uh, itong cargo mo na isasakay mo sa ship ay dadalin sa China. So, anyway, uh, yun ang transaction between this Singaporean corporation and this Chinese corporation. Now, itong ship na to, or yung barko na to, dumaan sa Pilipinas. Pagdating sa Pilipinas, ninakawan. Ninakaw yung cargo. So, uh, here, merong... Uh, Damages caused to the Singaporean Corporation, there is a cause of action na nandito sa, na, na, na dapat ipursu sa Pilipinas. But remember here, the business transaction did not arise from the Philippines. Duman lang sa Pilipinas. Pero dahil nga merong damages caused to the uh, Singaporean or foreign corporation, they can sue uh, in, the Philippine, in the Philippine courts. So yun ang tandaan natin, non-business transaction in the Philippines non exception from suit in the Philippines. Um, uh, here, if a foreign corporation na hindi nagbibusiness dito sa Philippines is allowed to file action in the Philippines later on, uh, such corporation cannot claim exception from being sued in the Philippine courts. So, for acts done against a person or persons in the Philippines. So, kung inalaw ang, ng Pilipinas ang isang foreign corporation na hindi nagbibusiness dito na mag -sue, uh, based on an isolated transaction, based on a non-business transaction in the Philippines, based on protection of trademark or trade name, inalaw siya ng uh, uh, Philippine courts to sue. Ngayon, pagka nag-contra-demanda ang mga Pilipino sa kanya, hindi, niya pwedeng, hindi siya pwedeng magpa-exempt doon, remember. So, yun ang tandaan natin, non-exemption from suit in the Philippines. Now, um, please take note also of the question, are contracts entered into by unlicensed foreign corporations valid uh, contracts? So, revised corporation code is uh, silent. Uh, American decisions are conflicting. Uh, nasa book ni uh, De Leon ito. So, uh, merong view that the contract is void based on uh, Article 5 of the uh, Civil Code of the Philippines. Sabi kasi sa Article 5, Acts which are executed against the provisions of mandatory or prohibitory laws shall be void. So, dito sa Pilipinas, meron tayong mandatory law. Kung ikaw ay magbibusiness dito sa Philippines, foreign corporation ka, uh, ang ating mandate, kumuha ka ng license. Ang ating, uh, uh, there is a prohibition to transact business if you do not have a license. So, mandatory law ito, prohibitory law ito. Ah, uh, because that is the case, meron tayong, at tapos ito namang foreign corporation na to, violate pa rin niya itong mandatory prohibitory law na to by transacting or doing business in the Philippines without a license. Remember, sabi ng Article 5, sabi na ng bawal eh, pero ginawa niya pa rin. So, the contract here, sabi ng Article 5, is a uh, void, remember. And even if the foreign corporation subsequently complies with the legal requirements, it will not cure the defect. Now, um, the second view is uh, the contract is valid as to innocent 
uh, parties. So, sabi sa uh, second view, yung prejudice will is limited only to the guilty corporation and not the innocent parties who have dealt with the said unlicensed uh, foreign corporation but in good faith. So, ang ano dang daw dyan, ang liability lang daw is doon sa guilty unlicensed foreign corporation. So, uh, hindi siya pwedeng tumakas sa liability niya to innocent uh, third persons na nagrely sa kanyang maybe probably misrepresentation na siya ay licensed foreign corporation. So, hindi siya pwedeng tumakas doon, liable pa rin siya sa mga innocent uh, third persons to whom it deals with. So, uh, hindi naman niya pwedeng, itong unlicensed foreign corporation na ito, hindi niya pwedeng maging depensa, ay, unlicensed ako, hindi ko na lang kayo babayaran. Hindi. Remember, yung contract na to is valid as to innocent uh, third person. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Yung third view is, sabi ng mga authors, better, uh, better reason, wiser and fairer policy. So, sabi niya, when there is, where there is a prohibition with penalty and there is no express or implied declaration respecting the validity or enforceability of contracts made by a foreign corporation, the contracts are enforceable upon compliance with a law. So, meaning, yung mga foreign, uh, unlicensed foreign corporation na ito, um, pwedeng makure yung uh, defect upon compliance with the law. Yung mga contracts na ito, pwedeng makure yung defect upon compliance with uh, the law. So, yun ang tandaan natin. Um, what else? Number section 151, grounds for revocation of license for of a foreign corporation. So, there are actually several uh, grounds for revocation. So, uh, these grounds are without prejudice to other grounds provided by a uh, special law. So, the SEC upon revocation is uh, required to issue a certificate of revocation and it will furnish a copy thereof to the appropriate government agency in case yung corp uh, foreign corporation na to is covered by such appropriate government agency. So, uh, Obviously, yung foreign corporation will also be given a copy of the certificate of revocation of license. So, grounds are failure to file annual report, failure to file any fees required by the revised code, failure to appoint and maintain a resident agent. What else? Um, kung nagpalit ng address ang resident agent or yung mismong resident agent ang nagpalit, there is failure to submit a statement of the change as required by the revised code. Uh, failure to of the SEC to submit to the SEC yung copy ng amended articles, amended bylaws or yung articles of merger or consolidation within the time prescribed by uh, law. Usually this is 60 days. What else? Um, misrepresentation of any material matter in the application, uh, report, affidavit or other document. So kahit anong misrepresentation sa kahit anong document submitted to the uh, SEC. Uh, what else? Failure to pay any and all taxes, impose assessment penalties due to the Philippine government. What else? Transacting business outside of the purposes for which the license is issued. What else? Um, transacting business as a dummy. Transacting business in the Philippines as a dummy for a foreign corporation not licensed to do business in the Philippines. So, Ano kanya, gin, uh, dami ka ng isang unlicensed foreign corporation. So, uh, yung mismong license mo, pwedeng ma-revoke dito sa uh, Philippines. Uh, what else? Any, very important, no? Any other ground which would render it unfit to transact business in the Philippines. So, the effects of revocation of a uh, license. Remember, um, any contract entered into before the revocation, valid, uh, pwedeng mag-file ng cause of action based on these valid contracts, even if the cause of action is filed after yung revocation ng license. Now, obviously, if a contract is entered into after the license is revoked, these contracts are invalid and unenforceable without prejudice to rights of innocent uh, parties. What else? 
under 150 foreign corporation can no longer transact business in the Philippines. It cannot maintain any suit or action uh, in court or other administrative uh, agency in the Philippines. Pero pwede pa rin siyang idemanda. So 150, it cannot sue but it can be sued. Pagka na-revoke na yung license ng foreign corporation. Uh, also, withdrawal of uh, uh, foreign corporations. So here, voluntarily, they will withdraw yung kanilang uh, application for, uh, well, uh, they will withdraw yung license, yung application, the, the license. So uh, under 153, they must comply with the following. Um, yung sa petition for withdrawal, they must indicate, number one, uh, all claims which have accrued in the Philippines uh, have been paid, compromised, or settled. So, ilalagay nila sa petition for withdrawal na, oy bayad na lahat ng aming utang. What else? Number two, nabayaran na namin lahat ang mga tax, impost, assessment, etc. which are due to the Philippine government. So, what else? Uh, number three, the petition for withdrawal of license has been published once a week for three consecutive weeks in a newspaper of general circulation in the Philippines. Oy, pinapublish na namin, etc. Yung aming petition. And also, please take note that the SEC will examine and inspect the book para makita niya kung nakakomply nga, bayad nga ba talaga lahat ng utang sa gobyerno, sa uh, creditors, etc. And um, if there is compliance with the requirements, SEC will issue a certificate of um, withdrawal. So, also, the courts may review yung action of the SEC in approving uh, uh, yung petition for withdrawal. So, anyway, class, that's it for uh, Title 15. Um, next week, we will be uh, talking about Title uh, 16 and 17. So, that will be our last meeting and you will have your uh, final quiz also. Uh, that will be, I think, December 5. So, please uh, prepare. And also, yung ating December 5 quiz will cover um, chapters uh, 5, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and uh, 13. Sige. Hanggang special uh, corporations na lang. So, uh, excluded are obviously Title 6 meetings, Title 7 stock and stockholders, Title uh, 14 dissolution, Title 15 um, foreign corporations, and obviously the other uh, titles we have not uh, discussed yet. So, please prepare. Obvious class na hindi pa kayo nanonood ng mga mga ibang uh, lectures natin dahil may analytics po nakikita ko. So anyway, please uh, prepare para makabawi tayo sa ating uh, final quiz class. So uh, thank you class and uh, good night.